Okay, so this is called the string problem, but I'd like to think of it as the tree problem. If you have a great big tree off in the distance in Costa Rica, and you want to know how tall it is, you can do it with trig, okay? So the easiest thing is if you want to measure the distance to the tree, okay, and if we pace it off, one pace is about a meter, okay? A pace is, a, if you make it kind of a long pace for people that are your size, you know, like gigantic basketball players or whatever, you're going to have to stretch out and make kind of a long pace, but about a pace is about a meter. So if you were to be able to practice pacing so that, and we will actually do this down there, we will practice so that you get a feeling for what, you know, 10 meters really is like. 10 kind of longish steps is 10 meters. All right, so if you walk right up to the base of the tree, and then you got your tree here, and then you, back here, you sight to the tree, all right, it, which is an angle. This is called an angle of elevation. Okay, this angle right here. Then, I didn't draw a very straight line there. I'm going to try that again then this angle and this side are all it takes to figure out the height of the tree. So let's do that quick. Let's say that we'd go 10 paces, that'd be 10 meters. And let's say the angle that we sighted to the tree was 35 degrees. Who in here knows the trig well enough to tell me what to do there? Yes, sir. All right, so the height of the tree I'm going to call H. And so tell me the trig equation I should write. Tangent of 35, h over 10. Perfect. Okay. So now solve for h, and what do we do to both sides? Times 10. Good. So it's 10 tangent of 35. Okay. So grab your calculator. What's tangent of 35? So it's 10 times 0.7, did you say? All right. And therefore, when you multiply that out, we get 7. And we just figured out that the tree would be 7 meters high, given that scenario. But that requires you to walk all the way up to the tree. Now, do you get if the tree is like a half mile away from you? That might be difficult. All right. So the cool thing that I'm going to show you is how you can do it by only walking part of the way up to the tree. All right, so, and then we're going to make a formula that will allow us to just basically put in the two numbers, the two angles that you take, and we'll be able to know exactly how tall something is by just taking an angle, walking 10 meters towards it, and taking another angle, and we'll know automatically how tall the thing is. All right, so how do you take an angle? Good point. How do you get this 35 degrees here? Well... Everybody grab, hey, do you have a smartphone with you? I bet most of you do. Grab your smartphone. And I'm going to use an iPhone. And on the iPhone, there is a compass. And if you pull the compass up, how many of you guys have an iPhone? Raise your hand if it's an iPhone. And that's almost everybody. Okay. And if you don't have an iPhone, I'm sure you have probably something comparable to the compass. There's probably something in your phone that will do that. Did you know that if you, you get the compass up, swipe to the left. Do you see that angle there? So now, if you hold it to the side like this, do you see that you can get it to be zero? It even turns green if you hit it exactly, zero. That means that it's zero degrees, right? All right, so watch me as I go from the side here, and I turn... And I'm, I'm sighting along the top of my phone here. I'm looking, I'm sighting up at the top of that clock there. And I'm basically lining up my phone so that I can sight down the top of the phone. And would somebody read that angle for me? All right, so 15 or 16 degrees. So let's say 15. That's what you'd be doing. And you just need somebody else to read it for you. Now, there may even be a way to freeze it. Oh, that's a good idea. You could screenshot it while you're holding it. 
see if I can pull that off. Um, all right, so if I take a screenshot and did it work? All right, awesome. That could work. You could screenshot it. And you can see how many degrees you're at from screenshotting it. Now, we don't need, really need it to be that complicated. If, it's, if there's a person standing next to you, all you have to do is have them tell you how many degrees it is. Do you get how we're going to cite the angle? Yeah. That part's easy, right? OK. So now I'm going to give you this scenario where we have a tree way over here. And we have two sightings, like this one's, say that again. I, I get what you're saying. It resets it by just tapping it. But then can you tell what angle it was at then? Oh, I see. Okay, so basically with tapping it, you can lock in the angle that you're at, and then you can hold it back later and look at it. Okay, cool. All right, so let's say that I made my first sighting, and it was at 35 degrees. I walk 10 meters towards the tree, because I don't want to have to walk like a half a mile. I'm just going to go 10 meters up, and then I'm going to sight it in again, and now it's going to be steeper, right? So let's say it goes from 35 to 40. Now, do you get that we have two triangles here? The green triangle and the pink triangle. My question is, how can we figure out how tall the tree is without ever knowing how far this was? We can figure it out using dark magic. Actually, in this case, trig. All right, so yes, this black distance there is 10, 10 meters. OK, so let's work it out. Let's figure this out. OK, so you're saying right here, this angle right here, between the 35 and the 40. Like this angle here, why don't you come up? Show me which one you're talking about. This one has to be 140. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. Okay, so this has to be 140. I will buy that because these two together will add up to 180. All right. So still, okay, that, that's, that's a nice start. Okay. So if I have this length right here, I have, do I have a right triangle that has that length in it? Is there any right? Ah, you could draw one in here. You could draw in right there a right triangle. And I've just made two right triangles. That's called dropping a perpendicular. That, all of a sudden, becomes this red triangle where I know a side, 10. And I know an angle, 35. And therefore, I can figure out any of the other sides in that triangle. Let's be specific. What is, in this case, the length of this little side right here? Everybody use trig. And see if you can do this. Okay, is it sine, cosine, or tangent of that 35? Okay, cosine of 35. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, and is this... Okay, I was going to say maybe cosine isn't going to work for us because we don't have the adjacent side. The adjacent side is that one. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, because it's an upside down. You, it, it gets a little bit... Okay, so it's not cosine. What is it? Sine. Okay, sine of 35. 
is opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, sine is SOHCAHTOA. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so if it's the opposite side here, which is, I don't know what, so let's call it Q. Wait, so sine is just hypotenuse. Yep. So Q over opposite over hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is 10. So then Q is really 10 times sine of 35. So, what is the sine of 35? And then times it by 10, so it's what? 5.73. Can anybody verify that? Should it round up? Yeah. All right. All right. So 5.74. And now we figured out this little side right here. 5.74. Now, we've got another right triangle where we know a side and an angle. Let's see if you can hang with this. This is your next right triangle where you know a side and an angle. I know the side right here is 5.74, but what's the angle? This little guy right here. How'd you get 85? All right, and where's the 55 come from? Aha. Uh -huh. If this one's 35 and this one's 90, we already have 125 degrees in that triangle, which means this would have to be 55 degrees. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So then, if that's 55, how much is this one? Well, 55 and 40 make 95, and 95 all the way up to 140 total. 140 minus 95, 45. I believe that's 45, isn't it? 85, 90, 140, yes. Did you guys get 45 for that? Oh, it has to add up to 180, not 140. Oh, sorry. 85. Okay. All right, my bad. I was adding them up to 140, not 180. Okay, so that one's 85. Now I've got a triangle where I've got an angle on a side. And if you're not, like I know some of you guys aren't in the higher level stuff, but that's the key, is if you have a right triangle and you have one angle and you have one side you can figure out anything using trig all right so this next calculation should i use sine cosine or tangent of the 85 from this 85's perspective we have the adjacent and we want the hypotenuse all right so cosine of 85 is adjacent the adjacent was 5.74 over the hypotenuse, which is this one right here, this blue dotted line. And I don't know what it is, so I'm going to call it P. Now, to solve this one, I have to multiply both sides by P and then divide both sides by cosine of 85. So when it's all said and done, it's P equals 5.74 over cosine of 85. Could somebody please do that on your calculator? 5.74 divided by cosine 85. Mr. W, you get it for me when you when you got it, all right? Can anybody verify that? Yeah. Okay, good. So if it's 65.86 right here, now I've got my final triangle I needed. This big red one here. And that side there is 65.86. I got a side and I got an angle. I knew this angle a long time ago was 40. If that's 40 and this is 65.86, I can figure out anything, including the height of the tree. All right, so now I can go, uh, is this sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. I agree. Sine of 40 degrees is equal to opposite. The opposite side is H 
over the hypotenuse, which is 65.86. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 65.86. What is sine of 40 times 65.86? 42. what? 33. And that's the number of chickens in Costa Rica, right? No. What is it? It's the height in what? In meters. So that's a 42 meter high tree. Now let's do a quick calculation to what that means to us. We're more used to feet, right? We say we don't say you're two meters tall. We say more like you're, you're six feet tall. Okay, so 127 feet. All right. So that's not an incredibly tall tree, believe it or not. In the rainforest, some of the trees are massive. Really, really, really tall. Yes. You're right. Now we've got a law of signs option. Now, law of signs means we don't have to use all of this really complicated right triangle stuff. All right. So here's what I want to do, and I want to show you how we can simplify this down a lot. I wanted to do it once all the way out with all of the, you know, like show you all the steps. But now what I want to do is create a shortcut so that all you need is your two angles. And you can go, here's an angle. Here's an angle that's 10 meters away. And you can go, do, 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 do. the answer is this. And you can get your answer really, really quick Okay, with this formula. All right, so let's set up the same scenario, except let's find a system that will always work that's quicker. But your smartphone typically has sine, cosine, and tangent on it, right? So if you have your smartphone, all we need is the formula and the smartphone, and we can do it. Don't have to bring your smartphone. But you get at some point, I can't, like, have you use a stick and figure out the height of a tree. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, we, will know, we will need some sort of technology to actually calculate this. I mean, you can get rough estimates, and actually, after a while, you start to get good at it. Okay, I know if I know that tree's 100 meters tall, well, that one looks like it's about 50% more, so it's 150 meters. Once you get a gut feeling on things. But, all right, so let's say that this angle, do you get, we don't know what that angle is going to be, so we have to use a variable for it. Okay, so this is going to get a little intense because we have to have variables for lacing. Uh, all right. How about if, can, can we use alpha? All right. And this other angle, I'm going to use beta. Now, if this math starts to go over your head, that's okay. When it's all done, we'll have a nice little formula that we can use to, uh, uh, to calculate this. And alpha is your first angle, beta is your second angle. And alpha is the first letter of the alphabet, beta is the second one in, in the Greek. All right. So then... That's, let's keep one thing constant because at least we'll have a nice simple number in there. And that's we'll always take 10 paces towards it. That means this distance will be 10. Get what I'm saying? Now, could we change that 10? Of course, but that means just wherever the 10 is in the formula, you can just change it if you want to. Okay? All right. Next thing. Uh, we need to be able to use the law of sines or the law of cosines, uh, we're going to need this angle right here. I already know what that angle is. Do you? Think about it. That one angle is beta. What's that angle I just drew the arrow to? No, don't give it a new name. We know it. Yes. 180 minus beta. Okay, so this spot right there, a total of 180, right? So this must be 180 minus the beta. Uh, I'm having a hard time writing. 180 minus beta. Okay. Next, if we've got an angle and we've got a side, uh, if we've got an angle and another angle and a side, we can use something called the law of sines, like you were saying. Okay to figure out any other side in this triangle, all right? So do you get that we're going to need to know this side next? I'm going to call it squiggly blue. We need to know squiggly blue next. So to get squiggly blue, 
from the law of sines, how many of you actually have heard of the law of sines before? Oh, many of you. Okay, good. Okay, the law of sines goes like this. A over sine A. Now, how, do, are you guys used to it the other way around where the sine is on top, or do you care? Just fine? Okay. Because you can flip it over and it would be the same, same thing. Okay. Equals B over sine B. This little B. Equals little C over sine big C. All right. And in this case, in the case of uh, this triangle right here, this guy with this guy with this guy, then we would do, is it, is it alpha? Okay, let me think now. We've got to have, yeah, we need to find that third angle. You're right. Exactly. If it's, if this third angle is based on these other two angles, you get the total would be 180. So we go 180 minus alpha minus 180 minus beta. It just happened there? Okay. So I know it's getting intense, but that's what that's what's going to, when it's all done, we're doing all this hard work so that we can have a really cool formula that nobody else will know. All right, 180 minus the 180. See how that's going to cancel that? All right. And this negative will go on to the negative beta, and it will be negative alpha. And the negative distributes to the negative beta, makes it positive beta. So it's beta minus alpha. That angle is beta minus alpha. Whew. Yeah, it was nice that those 180s cancel. And it's nice that we can simplify it down to one simple little thing, beta minus alpha. Okay. Now, remember that later we'll know what alpha and beta are. They'll just be numbers, like 35 and 40. And we'll be able to just go, oh, it's this 35 minus 40 or whatever. Okay, so now if we're going to use law of sines, we had to have an, a side and the angle across from it to be able to make law of sines work. And we have that now. Okay, so we're going to say that that's A and sine A. All right, so that's going to be like this. The side across from it is like 10 over sine A, which is sine of beta minus alpha. Okay. That's just setting up this over this. And again, our side was 10. So I put 10 over sine of beta minus alpha. Because this needs to go over the angle that it's across from and the sine of that angle. And this is the the angle that it's across from. Okay? Now, and again, I know some of you guys are like, your eyes are glassing over like, this is just too intense. And that's, and some of you are handling it just fine. But if you're, if you're getting it, if it's too intense, that's okay. What you're just seeing at the end, I can show you the final product. And as long as you can write that down, you'll have the numbers to stick in when we actually hit the, the ground in Costa Rica. Okay, so back to, we need to be able to solve for uh, this side, I called it squiggly blue before, remember? Okay, so we got to figure out squiggly blue. So then that means we want to use that as the B, the thing we don't have. Okay, and I don't think squiggly blue is going to hold up as a variable. So we better pick a variable for it. What do you want to call it? Okay, T. So this is going to be T. Squiggly blue is all right. Okay. Very good. You remember the their most common or their their state animal is it or no their country animal? All right. The white-tailed deer was their animal of choice in Costa Rica for their country animal. All right. So T over sine of the one across from it. So what? 
this goes across from the alpha. Yep. Sine of alpha. Okay. So now I ask you, what is T equal to? It's right here. Solve it for T. Get the T alone. So what do we have to multiply by to get T alone? Sine of alpha. So the final answer for what T is, is going to be, and T is not the final, final answer. The final, final answer is that other thing over there, but we'll get to it. T is sine of alpha times 10 all over sine of beta minus alpha. This might be the most intense trig problem that's ever been done in this room. Good, I'm glad it's working for you. It's awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to do, I've got T, and i got to transfer that to this. How do I find this side? We're going to call it H, which is the logical thing, the height of the thing we wanted, right? H, we need H, and we need T, and we need beta in an equation. So sine of... Sine of, sine of what though? Sine of beta is equal to, yep, wait, 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 one thing at a time. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so h over t, right? Sine, is, sine of beta is h over t, but we know t, right? t is all of this stuff. So now I'm going to substitute this equation where t is all that into here and I'm going to erase this t and put in all that. Sine alpha times 10. I'm going to throw the 10 in front now. Getting fancy. All over sine of beta minus alpha. All right. Now, to get H alone, I'm going to have to multiply by that on both sides. And I've got H alone, and I've got my height. Do you get how glorious that is? H is all alone as soon as I multiply by 10 sine alpha over sine beta minus alpha on both sides. I'm going to cheat and use my cloning tool here and go clone and then drag it over here and I multiplied by it up on both sides. And why did I do that? So that that will cancel that and now H is alone and there's my answer. Now please write this down somewhere or here I can even write it out a little more clearly 10 sine alpha, which was our first angle we took, sine beta, which is the second angle we took, make sure I've got this right, all over sine of beta minus alpha. And that's what the height will be. Now, do you get all I'd need to do if I didn't want to take 10 paces and I wanted it instead, like I need to get a little further, I can take 20 paces? Yeah. Change it to 10 for a 20, and then you got it. Okay? And alpha is your first measurement, beta is your second measurement. And that's a nice, clean little formula for now, if you ever needed your distance real quick, just pop the numbers in. So let's try it. Imagine for a moment that I did my first measurement, my alpha, and it was 40 degrees. And then I did my beta, and my beta angle, my second measurement, came out to 45 degrees. And I stuck with my 10 foot measurement, or 10 meter measurement. Let's figure out the height real quick. Just grab your calculator and put in alpha's 40 and beta's 45. Now let's crank it out.
Be careful with the parentheses and stuff. You might want to put, put the top in parentheses. All I was asking is if we could try sticking in alpha's 40 and beta's 45. What'd you get? 52? You got 52 also? All right. Now, does 52 meters seem like plausible? All right. Okay. 52? All right. Cool. So, now you might want to uh, just take a picture of this with your phone. Because, are you going to remember this? You going to have it memorized? Probably not. And if you're not bringing your calculator with you, there's no sense in typing it in your calculator. You could actually, you could make a program for this in your calculator. It wouldn't be that hard if you knew how to program. I mean, I could do it in 20 minutes. I could have that program done. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be that hard. Well, once you get the program done, though, the cool thing is you can save it in your calculator. And then all you have to do is type in the first angle, type in the second angle, and it'll just do it for you. You don't have to even think. You just type in the first number, type in the second number, enter, and it would do it. Okay, so that is some pretty heavy-duty trig. We've got a cool formula that's all done that you can take a picture of here with your phone if you want to. And then if you ever needed a height, and I know, you know, you, you don't need something like this, but it's kind of some cool math. So, all right. One last thing I'd like to do with you today uh, is figure out how, how scary is this whole Zika thing, okay? Now, we don't know. We don't know a lot, but we can use some math to, like, help you feel a little bit better about, you know, what if you get bit by a mosquito and you're, like, going, oh, my gosh, am I the one? We human beings tend to think we're going to be the one. This is why there is such a thing as lotteries. Because if you really, really knew your probabilities, and you probably should say, there's no way I'm going to win. You know that it's so unlikely, but yet people still buy it. Why? Because they think they're going to be the one. All right. All right. Judging by how close we are to 8 o'clock, I think I'll save this one for the next time we meet. Because... Knowing how low your probability, I, I guess, spoiler alert, your probability is incredibly low that you are going to be bit by the mosquito that gives you Zika. Okay? Yep. My dad said that it only stays in the body for about seven to eight weeks during that time period, and then after that, the body is trying to figure it out. Yep. And if you're not pregnant during that time period, which I don't think any of us here are, <laughs> um, I hope, we hope not, yes, yes. Then um, we should be okay even if we are pregnant. Gotcha. And I can't verify that. I wish I could. I, I, I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm assuming that at some point your body's going to, like, kick this virus's butt and it'll be out of you. So we, there's a lot we don't know. But the probability, I just wanted to get to the point of realizing what's the probability you're the one. It's kind of like saying we're going to go swim in the ocean and you're going to be the one that's going to be eaten by a shark. Okay? Not likely. Okay, so it's extremely unlikely that you're going to get Zika. But we are going to be, like, super vigilant about putting on mosquito repellent because there's other bad things you can get from mosquitoes. Down there, there's other things besides Zika. You know what I mean? And there's other, so there's lots of reasons we really don't want to be bit by a mosquito just in case. Again, the probabilities of that are extremely low, too. But why take the chance if we can avoid it? So we'll do our best to avoid it. All right, cool. You've learned some good math, and I'll save that for the next time we'll do that probability uh, little experiment. And that's all I got for the video for today.